Hey there everyone, welcome back to another random gameplay of a game I want to play, basically. Uh, <laughs> today we're looking at Rogue Hearts Dungeon, which is a roguelike on the PS2. And the reason we're looking at this game today is that it's made by Compileheart, who... Well, besides the fact that I just like roguelikes and I wanted to play this one, um, this game is made by Compileheart, who is releasing uh, Holy Sorcery Story or Sei Mado Monogatari on the Vega, on the PlayStation Vita tomorrow, or probably it'll be out by the time I upload this. But uh, Compileheart made that, and it's a roguelike, and this is a roguelike by Compileheart, so I figured I'd, you know, play this and get a feel for how good Compileheart is at making roguelikes, but, you know, I don't have to really worry. I'll explain. Well, anyway, we'll get into the... We'll, I'll explain while I play. So, we're going to go into the third dungeon here, which is um, about 75% into the game. It's going to be hard. If I die, which is likely... Um, you know, don't don't be a sh <laughs> don't feel bad because I probably will die and probably quickly. But anyway, we're gonna um. What I was saying is this is made by Compileheart, and the maker of Compileheart actually was the first person in Japan to uh, port the original Rogue on the PC to to the uh, Japanese computers. So. Apparently, you know, I had nothing to worry about, but this is apparently a a straight port of Rogue, the computer computer game Rogue, to the PlayStation 2, with obviously with graphics instead of ASCII art. But uh, yeah, we're this is um, Rogue. There's pretty much nothing to it. It's a roguelike, and pretty solid roguelike in that let me explain what a roguelike is for people who don't really know which is probably a lot of people I mean it's not the most well-known genre and it's, it's not the most popular genre but a roguelike is a game like this in that here I am I go into a random randomized dungeon so it's random in that the stages are randomly generated so it's different every time and the monsters are random, the items you pick up are random, everything is random. And it's kind of turn-based in the sense that I move the enemy, when I move the enemies move at the same time. So if I move one space, the enemies will move one space. If I don't move, the enemies won't move. If I attack, the enemies will get their one turn, I guess. So, you know, it's turn-based in that sense. But it's random, and... Your items are determined by what you pick up in the labyrinth. You can't bring anything with you besides... You have starting gear. I, mean, I guess I should say that. You do have starting gear. And... Damn. You... You know, you use your starting gear. And you find new items in the dungeon. When you leave the dungeon, you revert back to level 1. And you lose all your items. That's pretty much it. I mean... It's like starting over again from the beginning once you leave the dungeon. I'm gonna move up here and shoot because I can do that. But yeah, so that's generally how roguelikes work. Um, you might be familiar with roguelikes if you've played any of like Chocobo Dun Chocobo Dungeon. I think that's on the Wii, but there might be others. I know there's others in Japan. I'm not sure in English though. And there's also recently the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon game that came out on the 3DS, and there's been a couple of those also on other systems. But uh, the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games are like roguelike ultra light or something. It's they're much much easier than a standard roguelike, and even easier than other games in the same series. In that you know games like Sheer and the Wanderer are much more difficult than the Pokemon Mystery Dungeon games, and they're part of the same Mystery Dungeon series. But, yeah, generally, roguelikes tend to be, you know, not for people who are easily frustrated, and also not for people who, uh, you know, aren't a little bit masochistic in their game playing. Because, you know, this game, this dungeon, the level I'm on now, I don't know how many floors it is, I haven't been able to clear it once, 
but I've been down to about level uh, 26 or something, and I think I still didn't make it to the end, so I'm not sure how long it is. And I say that in that, like, I made it down to that level, but it means almost nothing because you have to go back out, too, so... <laughs> Uh, I usually end up running out of food or something by the time I get down there and I can't and I'll find myself dead. That happens to me more than getting killed by monsters. It's it's easy to get killed by monsters right in the beginning when you're a low level, but a after you level up, it's you know, you'll you'll find that it's harder to get killed by monsters and more easy to get killed by traps or uh, just starving to death. You can see up in the right-hand corner there's the condition there and that's my food. If it reaches zero, I die automatically. Uh, if you've played any games like Sheer and the Wanderer, if your food reaches zero, you'll start to lose health. But in this game, if you reach your condition reaches zero, it's auto death, automatic death. So it's something you really have to watch out for. But hopefully, hopefully, I won't starve to death in this playthrough. Um, I doubt I'll be even close to the end in this one, unless I get really lucky. Not that just said my... I'm losing health. I'm getting hungry. And you can see I am getting hungry. I'm at 44% now. And it goes down, not by every step, but every couple of steps, you'll start losing your condition, which is bad. And you see, I'm picking up items, and these items are all unidentified, so I don't know what any of them do, and... I have no way of identifying them until I find a scroll that will let me identify them. So it's not its not exactly easy, but it's not the kind of game that people who like easy games should be playing. But what's good about this game actually is that even though it's fully in Japanese, the story is like tacked on to the point where it's like not even necessary to understand to play. So, if, and it's ridiculously cheap. I want to point out that I bought this game brand new like still in the shrink wrap brand new from Amazon for 320 yen which is about three dollars and fifty cents and that was pretty recently last month so you know not the not the most expensive game I need some food okay but yeah we're looking at like I was saying the reason I I recently have been kind of playing a lot of roguelikes, and I was going to do a video on console roguelikes, the kind of console roguelike recommendations or whatever, but I'm kind of lazy about doing that stuff, and I don't think enough people will even care. <laughs> nobody nobody cares about roguelikes enough, to, I think, on consoles, and, you know, PC people who like roguelikes probably aren't playing their roguelikes on the consoles either, so... I just kind of gave up on that. And there are a bunch. There are a couple good ones that I would totally recommend. But, you know, I'm probably not going to make the video at any point because, you know, I, I have, like, probably about, I don't know, six or seven I would recommend. Oh, I got poisoned. Right off the, uh, right from the go, I guess. But it's the kind of thing where, you know, I just don't think anyone will be interested. And... Combined with the fact that I'm, like, ultra-lazy about making videos that require any type of editing. Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of editing videos. As if, obviously, if you're a watcher of my channel, you'll probably realize that right off. Um, sometimes I do it if I'm, like, feeling froggy. You know, I jump on that. But, uh, uh, other than that... I've got a lot of stuff here. I'm going to start randomly using scrolls because you can identify them by r randomly using them. Oh, that was a good one. That one, this one is the the item identification scroll that I was talking about. And that was a good use. So you can see that, actually, I have these ar this armor and stuff uh, that I have. If you put it on, you'll be able to identify it. Except if a lot of the items will be cursed items, so if you put them on, you know, they're, uh, you're cursed, and you can't take them off. So if you get, like, a, an armor there that's, you know, I had another one that's a three that's unidentified. You know, you might find, like, oh, it's a three. I can put that on and have three defense. Well, it might be a three minus two, 
and any of Midas stuff is cursed, so 3 minus 2 would be a 1 armor that I can't take off, which is bad news. Ooh, that scroll I just read was an armor strength thing, because my armor went up by 1. But, you know, you'll find that ooh, I ran out of oil, so everything gets dark. I almost never find oil again. So it's going to be dark gameplay from in on, here on out. Unless I get lucky and happen to find more oil. That almost never happens. I usually end up drinking it and then never find another one. Okay, let's see if we can't... Uh... There are... I'm actually... I'm sure there are ways to... Uh identify potions easier than uh, just drinking them all and f trying to figure it out that way. Um, you can smell them and you can kind of like look at them and stuff. So there we go, it smells good. Yeah. But you'll, s there, you'll see like Normally, I, when I get potions, I just drink everything and sometimes get poisoned and sometimes have a good effect and sometimes have a bad effect, but if you drink it once, you are you get it, it's identified forever. Well, as long as you're in the dungeon, so it's helpful. But, you know, that's probably not the best way to play. Um, not even probably, that's not the best way to play. <laughs> that's a, actually a pretty bad way to play, but... What can I say? I'm... You know, sometimes you don't have any, have any options. And sometimes you do and you just don't care. Like me. Which is probably why I haven't finished this game yet. But... You know, generally... There have been some good roguelikes in the... In... Recent days, there's a... Uh... Oh, that's a good one. That one showed me where items are. Deep enough in the dungeon for that to matter. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, see, my condition is pretty bad. It's four percent. I didn't. I wasn't paying attention to it, so it got really low, really fast. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start dumping items here because I don't need any of this stuff. And I'm gonna identify. Identify this sword. See now it's a you can see it's a three plus one, so it's a four attack, so it's better than what I have now. So we'll equip it. You can see I've got some arrows here, ten fire arrows. But yeah, generally this is how the game plays out. Every level you go down, you fight stronger enemies and find better items. Oh, snake. You can see that thing was just a big the enemy here is just a glowing rainbow. It's because I drank something that makes me not be able to identify the enemies. Uh, that's that's a bad potion, <laughs> but it's not really it's not really a big worry right now because I'm not deep enough in the dungeon for it to matter. Whereas I don't think anything here is strong enough to kill me quickly. But in some cases, it, it does matter because you'll find like in deeper parts of the dungeon there's giants and stuff that are, can do like massive damage to you with one hit and usually like you want to take those from afar use some arrows or something and sometimes there's you know magic users that you want to be close to so they don't use magic on you so it's helpful to be able to see the enemies but some you know at this point in the game there's not really much to, that can kill me well, I mean, everything can kill me, but nothing that can kill me straight up easily like those other Ida other guys can, so it's not terrible. Yeah, so here we are. We've got more stuff going on here. That's odd. That's bad. You can see I got frozen there. That's. If you get close to those guys, they'll stop using magic. But I didn't realize he was going to be there. But okay. So you can see, I went back and cleared the rest of the stage. It's important in the beginning to level up as much as you can, and to pick up as many items as you can, so that 
you know, you're strong enough to fight enemies later on in the in the dungeon. If you don't do that, you're pretty much going to die really easily later on. And you don't want to do that. Because, although in some cases you can just run through the stage, like you'll, you'll spawn and the, the exit will be really close to where you uh, start on the stage. And you can just go down, but it's not recommended that you do that. Because you might miss out on some good items, or you might run out of food, or you might run out of tons of stuff. It could backfire on you too. You could go through a whole stage searching for food and find none, and then you'll be out of food and, you know, have nothing better for your effort. So, you know, it's randomized, so you have to, you have to, you know, kind of risk reward benefit. Oh, I don't care about that. I, what I picked up there was a ring that hides me from enemies. It doesn't really hide me, it just makes it harder for me to see. Harder for them to see me. But I'm not really worried about it right now. I mean, I'll put it on. Just because. I don't have any other rings, but... Okay. But there are a bunch of different type of, types of rings, but the rings are... are... are evil a lot of times. Like, you'll just get rings that damage you, or uh, rings that minus... give minuses to your abilities. So, I... You always have to identify rings before you put them on, because if you put them on, they don't get identified, which is another downside to them. Okay, not so useful. Okay. But anyway, this is generally how the game will play. I'm just gonna randomly talk about stuff, because that's what I do randomly talk. So, yeah, I'm pretty excited for Holy Sorcery Story, which comes out tomorrow. It's a roguelike, again, by Compile Heart, which is why we're playing this. And it's not about... This one is about finding... Ah, oh, I got... That was some kind of alcohol. So I'm, I'm confused right now. I'm confused and drunk. So I'm walking around randomly. I can't control which direction I go. But, there we go. But, when that game comes, that's that game I'll be playing tomorrow, but... It's, um... I don't know, it's not like this in the sense that this has like a real fantasy story, like... There's actually a story that involves me searching for these things called the Rogue Hearts... Uh, to defeat this kind of demon lord from destroying the world or whatever it is. But in the in Holy Sorcery Story, it seems more character based. You have a party, so one guy, one guy, and you're kind of well, you're a little girl and your pet, and you're running around searching for ingredients to make the world's best curry, or some kind of magical curry to save your local curry shop. I believe is this the actual story. But that game, I don't know. I'm a ah oh man, more confusion. But you'll see that, you know, that game, I'm excited for it in, because it's a roguelike, but not so much the aesthetic is, you know, it's kind of uh, little girls in cute clothes, which is not my thing. I know a lot of people like that. People like the the uh, Atelier games um, seem to be fans of that kind of thing. And I, I'm not like... I don't hate it, I just don't like it. It's not my preferred art style, so... You know, it's not something I'm really into. And I know a lot of people are, and I don't fault them for it. I don't think it's bad or anything. Uh, I know some people think of it as, like, sexualization of children or whatever, but, uh, you know... Not me, I just think people like cute things. Especially in Japan, people like cute things. And, you know, a lot of people who like the Atelier games are girls. I mean, guys like it too, obviously, because, um, there's plenty of people like that kind of cute, girly 
style because it's nice to look at. And it is, I mean, in theory, but, you know, I, I generally prefer something, uh, I don't know, I don't know if I want to say realistic, but I prefer, like, dark fantasy, so the art style for, um, Soul Sacrifice is right up my alley. I like that kind of thing. It's creepy and dark and weird. Um, generally, I think if it looks like something that might have come out of a Clive Barker movie, it's something I would enjoy. Uh, but, you know, having a cutesy art style isn't going to draw me off from playing a game that seems like it has an interesting concept, which it does for a lot of people. But, you know, if you do that, you miss out on a lot of good games. Like, you know, if I decided, oh, I'm not going to play a game because it has a cutesy art style, I would have missed games like Etrian Odyssey, which is, you know, would be a bad idea because it's a great game, just doesn't have my preferred art style. Whereas, you know, there's plenty of games with a, with a good art style that, uh, you know, aren't really great games. So, you know the kind of thing where it's not always, uh, can't always judge judge a book by its cover, I guess, is the old saying. But, yeah. I don't know how long I'm gonna last in this. I'm lasting pretty, a lot longer than I thought I would. And that will mean this video will be long. People like long videos will be happy. In, in all honesty, I really like long videos. You know, I, I watch a lot of videos on YouTube, but more so I listen to videos on YouTube. And I usually listen to them at work. So when people make videos, I'll occasionally like flip over if it sounds like they're talking about something on screen that's interesting, but mostly I just listen. And, you know, that's probably a bad thing because YouTube's video based. But, you know, if someone makes, I'm much more likely to, to watch somebody's like, 20 minute video than I am to watch their 2 minute video because uh, doesn't uh, make me want to uh, you know I don't have to search for a new video every uh, every time every couple of minutes if someone makes a long video so you know that's always good and I'm just you know we're just kind of random rambling here I don't have anything really I wanted to talk about I just wanted to play this game and let there's not really any gameplay footage for it on YouTube um, before I bought it, I was searching around, but there wasn't really anything besides the original, like, uh, kind of trailer for it, the game trailer. But beyond that, there's not any real gameplay, so I figured I'd put some up, I guess, and show people who might be interested in Rogue Heart Dungeon. But, you know, if you're interested in roguelikes, mm, like a more close to an actual like PC roguelike. This one is pretty good game to play because it's not easy. Uh, it's not. It doesn't have any of the kind of things that you have in Mystery Dungeon where like you know you can die and not lose all your levels and items. I mean, for example, in Shira and the Wanderer, you don't you you can set it so that you don't lose your uh, stuff or levels when you die, which is you know kind of, it's super easy mode really but in this oh I teleported <laughs> to the entrance to the exit but not where I wanted to go but um, yeah generally if you're interested this game is f ridiculously cheap and it's also you know a pretty good roguelike so it's the kind of thing where you know, it's good to have somebody talking about it just because, you know, roguelikes don't get a lot of love on the consoles. I mean, from game de developers and fans of roguelikes, so, you know, it's nice to have a little something out there. But, yeah. So, yeah, I was talking about Etrian Odyssey earlier. So there's, they're making a new Etrian Odyssey game called New Etrian Odyssey with a subtitle I forgot, and it doesn't sound promising. <laughs> um, it sounds less good than a normal Etrian Odyssey game, which is 
you know, not so great. Uh, I'll admit I'm not, not nonplussed, I guess I can say, uh, about the details of the new Etrian and Odyssey game. It's apparently a remake of the first Etrian and Odyssey, but you can't make the characters. They're preset, and it has a more focus on the story, which is not, you know, the story is not really why I play Etrian and Odyssey. And I, I'm not saying there's no story in Etrian and Odyssey. Um, there is a story. It's, uh, you know, there's a lot of stuff you can you can read about the items and the uh, the world stuff in Etrian Odyssey, and there is like a world. It's it's a lot. It's similar to something like Dark Souls, where there's you know, it's not like an explicit story, but if you look for it, there is a pretty in-depth story. But uh, you know, I don't really play Etrian Odyssey for the story, which you know, uh, you know, doesn't. It's not filling me with confidence that they're going to focus more on the story and less on the kind of wizardry style party creation and kind of crazy build up for making the perfect party and whatever. That's the kind of thing I enjoy. I've been recent, recently played through uh, the original wizardry, the first, the original wizardry trilogy, I guess you'd say. Oh, damn it. Am I going to die? No, I didn't. Sweet. Okay, uh... That's to raise my strength. And... Again. But, yeah. I recently played through the original Wizardry tr Trilogy. And I played it on the Sega Saturn because, you know, everything's better on the Saturn. And the Saturn version has all three games on one disc. And it's actually pretty cool because it has the original graphics and new, like, polygonal graphics for the Saturn. I mean, there's a PlayStation version also that has that, and I'm sure the PlayStation version is just as good as the Saturn one, but, you know, I'm partial to the Saturn. But, yeah, the, so I've played those recently on the Saturn, and it's good stuff. Uh, there's virtually no story. There is kind of a story, and not to say there's no story, absolutely nothing, but... Oh, that's the exit. There's, um... You know, it's the first game has the story like there's an evil wizard at the bottom of this this dungeon. Go kill him. That's the story. I mean, that's all you got. You don't. There's no characters to talk to. There's no. Ah, oh, damn it! I hate these guys. So what happened right there was that big um, hippo-looking dude d just damaged my armor. And there's a way to stop it. I just don't have it a way to stop it. I don't think, at least. Let's see if I do. Nope. But, I don't even remember what I would... There we go. So now you can see my armor and glue is glowing yellow there. The number is yellow. That means it can't be damaged by those guys anymore. And that's permanent for the armor, so that's a good thing. What was I talking about? Wizardry. So, you know, the second wizardry is like, there are these dudes who attacked, attacked the, the kingdom and they're evil and you have to go collect this, uh, like, set of armor, that set of armor and weapons to defeat him. The, the knight's armor or the knight of something armor. I don't remember what it's called. Knight of hearts armor or something. And that's it. You there's The dungeon is six levels. And after six levels, you're done. And it's also, you know, a lot of people like think, oh, in Wizardry you have to grind or go crazy, but you don't, actually. I mean, you know, I beat Wizardry 1 at level 10, so there's not a lot of grinding that's went on. Oh, damn. Almost did. Because I'm not paying attention. But, yeah... So, you know, Wizardry 1, I'd be at level party of level 10 guys. Not even, actually, because some of them... Uh, I had, like, a wizard and a priest at level 12, and two fighters at level 10, and a thief at level 10, and uh, somebody else. Uh, oh, a bishop at level 8. And it was enough to beat Wardna, who was the end boss. So it's not like you, I need to grind or be super strong. You just need to have a good strategy and a good party. 
which is, again, the reason I like Etrian Odyssey. And the reason I'm not so excited about the new direction they're going to give the series. But, yeah, I don't know. Maybe it'll... I mean, generally Atlas doesn't steer me wrong, so hopefully it'll be good. I mean, I'll, I'm still going to buy it. I'm not uh, saying I'm not going to buy it, but... You know, I'm just kind of a little worried about how much I'm going to enjoy it in comparison to the other games. It's possible I'll like it more, but... You know, I'll give it a shot, but... Hey, that ring's pretty good. Plus two strength. Okay. Oh, I'm doing more damage. That's good. Okay. But, yeah. The... I don't know. Uh, there's... I have some requests to do videos about some types of games, like... Kind of... Uh, someone asked me to do a video about first-person dungeon crawlers, but I, I've been trying to do it. Like, I've been trying to think of, like, oh, what would I recommend to people for first-person dungeon crawlers? And then I have I come up with a list, and it's, like, it's got, like, 60 games on it, and I can't pick any of the games I want to recommend to people. So I've been trying to, like, narrow it down to, like, modern first-person dungeon crawlers, and... Even that I've been having a tough time because, you know, I think like, oh, well, you know, I would want to put Etrian Odyssey on there. I guess I'd just put one game from each series to make it easier. But even then I feel like, well, you know, I can't leave this off and I can't leave this off. And then suddenly I have like 10 games that I would make a video that's 40 minutes and nobody wants to hear me ramble. I mean, maybe some people want to hear me ramble about first-person dungeon crawlers for 40 minutes, but I don't want to make that video because it, I would have to edit it. And, you know, I feel about editing, so... <laughs> so, just listening to my, uh, my thoughts on this, I, I realize why, like, I'm never gonna be a big YouTube channel, because I, I'm too lazy to edit any of my videos or care about lighting or do any of that stuff that people seem to enjoy. Make a, you know, uh, give myself a goofy inanimate object as a sidekick or whatever, I don't know, uh, stuff that people do on YouTube to try to make things more entertaining. I'm not about that, I'm just about talking about stuff I like and hopefully finding some other people who enjoy it. And frankly, like, you know, I already have way more subscribers than I ever thought I would have, so uh, I'm not even, like, really worried about it. So, you know, as long as I get a good bunch of people commenting on videos every once in a while, and not every video, I mean, some of my videos get, like, a hundred views and nobody, can, and, like, two people will comment, and I don't really care, I'm just thinking, like, you know... Some not everyone can be a winner, as it, <laughs> as they say. And I'm not expecting all my or any of my videos to be like super popular. As long as some people comment and it's fun, then I still keep doing them. And this video is already over a half hour. I'm kind of shocked. Shocked for a few reasons. That I'm still alive is one, but that I'm still talking <laughs> and I haven't. Uh, have stuff to talk about? I don't really, I'm just kind of rambling. But maybe some people will enjoy my rambling videos with gameplay. Oh, I just blinded myself. Great. But, I don't know. So, I guess I, I could talk about roguelikes in this video if... I mean, I can't really ask you if you're interested, but I'm interested. And, uh... Recently, I've been playing a few. Played. Uh, I'm trying to think of the English name. It's uh, Unlosing Ranger versus Dark Death Evil Man. I believe is one. That's on the PSP, and it's uh, ah. That was really close. <laughs> My condition was at zero there. I uh, wasn't paying attention. That's bad news. 
And uh, I am nearly... I'm out of food. And I haven't found any more food. And I'm quickly running out of condition. So this video might come to an end really soon. But anyway, I was talking about Unlosing Ranger versus Dark Death Evil Man, which is kind of fits into the theme of stuff I've been playing recently, which is like tokusatsu related. Uh, you're kind of a superhero fighting a monster, and it's a roguelike, so you you know you go through, and it's sim the gameplay is similar to this, except that you pick up a lot more variety of items, and uh, you know you kind of keep you have an overall level. Whereas in this game, there's no overall level. If you die, you die, and you lose all your progress. But uh, in that game... Oh, I lost something there. In that game, you have an overall level, and a so every time you go into a stage, you, you start at level 1, just like this, and you have to level your way up through by picking up items, but you can bring some items with you. I'm going to be dead in uh, about uh, 5 seconds. So... Unless... Unless... Um, nope, I'm dead. So you can see, you can see what happens. This is random. Oh, damn it. Yeah, I'm dead. The next move I make is is my death. So I'm dead here. So this will be the end of the video. I'm not going to continue talking. I was talking about ZHP, but that is a video for next time. So anyway, I guess we'll we'll die here. There we go. Mo, we're looking at I can't move anymore. I'm dead. So you can see it's random. And I ran out of food, so I died. Which is generally how those things work out. It's a roguelike, that's what happens. When it's random, you don't really have a choice. Sometimes you'll end up with like so much food you don't know what to do, and sometimes, like this, you starve to death. So, you know, and sometimes you never find any weapons, sometimes you never find any armor. It's, it's all random. But yeah. That will be the end of this video. So I'm just randomly showing some gameplay. So this video is ridiculously long. And what I got right there was three medals. And this game sort of has a thing where I can accumulate those medals to buy items. And I haven't actually bought anything yet. So I'm not sure if it means I can change my starting equipment. Or I don't really know. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. You have like a starting equipment where you... You start with a, actually an armor and a sword and three pieces of food. So I think if I go in here and I look at the... Uh, I think this is a treasure box. Yeah, the treasure box area here is like additional food, additional medicine, um, a random scroll. This one is a staff. Uh, this is medicine plus two. This is a large sword. Uh, this is some kind of armor. Fire arrows, uh, ice arrows, wooden box. Uh, the wooden box is like you can use to hide. This is two scrolls, two stabs. Um, this is a dragon killing sword. This is a shield, maybe? Yeah. And this is a range mode, which is a different, probably a different story or a different depth for each dungeon which you can unlock later but yeah that's about it for Rogue Hearts Dungeons it's a pretty solid roguelike and I have no complaints about this game it's exactly what I thought it was going to be and at a pretty good quality level so if anyone is interested it's cheap probably cheap to import as well and it's good so if you like console roguelikes which you don't have a lot of choices beyond that are not mystery dungeon games this is a good choice so uh, i guess until i get the itch to make another random gameplay video i'll see you guys next time see ya